I've always felt like I've had a solid understanding and relationship with money, but as years went on, I started to become more and more curious about money. And I started to feel like there was a lot I didn't know yet. I was right. In fact, the moment I realized I still had a lot to learn about money was the exact same moment I realized that everything I thought I knew about money was wrong. I remember how upset I was about it, how infuriating it was to step into a world of the unknown thinking I knew something only to find out that I knew absolutely nothing. So in this video, I wanna break down exactly what misconceptions I had about money that actually held me back financially purely because I lacked knowledge. Something I've always been infatuated with is making money. Ever since I was a kid, I mean the very idea of making money and having control over what I could buy was something that was always intriguing to me. And as I grew and became an adult, I became even more infatuated, but this time it wasn't because I wanted control over what I could buy. It was because I began to understand the true value of money. The only downside of that is I feel like I learned about the true value of money way too late, and I can't help but think of where I'd be if I only would have learned this lesson sooner. I was always taught that you had to trade your time for money. There was absolutely no way around it, and the only way you could increase your income was either to make more per hour or simply work more hours. That's all I grew up seeing, so it kind of proved what I've been hearing about for my whole life or so I thought that was until I hit 21 years old and I stepped into a world of knowledge that I didn't even know existed one day I just so happened to be online looking up ways to make more money you know how to make extra money from home how to make money online those types of videos well I came across a lot of videos on YouTube where people were actually sharing how much money they were making on YouTube and they were making more than I was making at my full-time job and this was considered to be a high paying job. So I got curious and I deep dive into a rabbit hole of ways to make money on YouTube and I found that this was like a vehicle to make money. What I just told you a few seconds ago about YouTubers making more money on YouTube than I was making at my full time job, that was just an ad revenue. That wasn't including how much they made with selling their merch that they linked in their YouTube description. That didn't include how much they made selling their programs, memberships, books, or anything. The thing is, YouTube runs 24 seven and there's always someone around the world watching something on this platform. So not only were these creators making money from ad revenue every month, but their videos were actually marketing their products and whatever else they had to offer. So I slowly realized they were creating an entire customer base around the value that they're putting out there for free here on YouTube. And their viewers were buying even more stuff that they offered outside of YouTube, like multiple times a day. Then I came across this term called passive income, and it was described to me very plainly. Making money around the clock despite whatever it is you're doing. Matter of fact, it's making money in your sleep. It blew my mind so much that it was all I could think about because something that doesn't rely on your presence or time that still pays you sounds literally like a dream. I didn't know about passive income until I was 21. So imagine growing up believing that the only way to make money was to trade your time for it pretty much for the rest of your life. And then discovering online of all places that you can actually build vehicles that make money for you consistently. And once they're built, you won't really have to do that much. And to top it all off, it takes way less time to build those vehicles than it does to work an entire 40 years in a career that you may or may not like. And they have the power to pay you more than your job does. And the crazy thing to me is the fact that a lot of people still don't know what passive income is or they just don't believe in it. I don't know if you grew up having unrealistic aspirations like most kids do, but I did. The first thing I wanted to be was an actor. I was inspired by Leonardo DiCaprio and he's still one of my favorite actors. Growing up, whenever a kid wanted to be a dancer, a singer, a pro sports player, or even a rapper, they got shut down hard. They were pretty much told, hey, I get it. You wanna be rich and famous one day but that's only reserved for those who are really good at singing and dancing. That's only for the lucky ones who make it that get to go pro. So as you grow up seeing really good football players in high school become accountants instead of going pro, when you see extremely talented singers that once aspired to sing on Broadway become school teachers, it proves what your parents and everyone else has been saying. So it reinforces knowledge, AKA what you thought you knew. Because what you thought you knew was that it's more beneficial to get a job than it is to go for your far-fetched dreams. And what you thought you knew was that your dreams of making a lot of money and becoming rich slash wealthy could only exist in a world where you become a famous celebrity, athlete, or both. But with that thought process, there's a lot of things that don't get taken into consideration. A lot of people don't realize you can still make a lot of money without those things. I mean, think about it. Pro players get more than just highly paid contracts to play for a few years. They also get sports deals and endorsements. Just like I'm sure you've seen those tonal commercials that feature LeBron James. He gets paid for that. 
passively. Think about athletes you see in the Gatorade commercials, Serena Williams, Tiger Woods. They get paid for that. A lot of parents think this stuff is reserved for athletes and celebrities only, but that's just not true. Now, this is actually something I found the other day on Instagram, and I'm going to read it to you real quick. And this is something that we all need to think about when it comes to money in general, because this stuff is really powerful. Earn Your Leisure posted this on Instagram. Shout out Earn Your Leisure. In 2014, Kobe Bryant invested $6 million into a startup sports drink company called Body Armor. Today, Coke is in the process of purchasing the company for $5.6 billion. Kobe's stake in the company is now worth almost $800 million. Let's keep going. Kobe made $323 million in NBA contracts during his career. One equity deal has doubled his NBA earnings and was not contingent on him playing or being alive. Sports are temporary. Business is forever. Hashtag Mamba mentality. Rest in peace to Kobe Bryant. And this is important because we're talking about money beyond the grave for the people who matter the most to us. His family is going to be all right no matter what. But how many of us can honestly say that about our families? And before you say anything, this ain't just for the celebrities and pro athletes. This is for the people who understand how money works. But I'll expand on that in just a second. Right now, I want to talk about something that this misunderstanding about money leads to. And it's something that we all hold near and dear to our hearts. The one thing that seems like you can't live without it. But it's also something that you're made to believe that you can't live with either. Debt. The funny thing is, because of the misconception that most of us have about making money, we convince ourselves that the only way to make a good amount of money is by going into debt. Think about college, taking out student loans, which half the time you don't even get educated on. That was me. My understanding of debt was like the lowest level of understanding that you could possibly have about anything. I simply thought of debt as something that happens as a result of you borrowing money and you just slowly pay it back over time. I didn't understand that there were different types of debt or there were ways to avoid debt altogether. Most importantly, I didn't know how to look at the interest rates and understand what that meant for my future. But anyway, I'm not going to bore you with all that. I just want to say this. When I graduated from college, I was $32,000 in debt, which even though that's kind of a lot of money, is still a lot lower than what most college kids owe. Well, when I finally started making money, and honestly, even before that, a lot of people in my life like family, friends, the internet... They made it seem like it was this big, daunting task to pay off debt, almost as if it was extremely difficult to get out of debt. And that's not always the case. Back then, I was looking up strategies to get out of debt the quickest, and I came across Dave Ramsey, and one of the first pieces of advice I heard him give was something I highly disagree with. I think the world of the guy, but I just don't agree with some of his advice, and this was no exception. He said the first priority when it comes to becoming financially independent is to pay off all debt unless it's good debt like your house. This was basically his advice. Save up $1,000 and then focus on paying off all your debt. I could see if you had a bunch of high interest debt like credit cards because then if you didn't pay that off quick, the interest rates would literally eat your bank account alive. But stuff like student loans, something that has such low interest... I just have a hard time justifying the idea that you should save up only $1,000 and then pretty much proceed to throw every single dollar you have to your name at it. I say that with a lot of confidence too because I've done that before and the whole time I was questioning myself like, really? Pretend like you're my student loans. $200, $500, here's an extra $1,500. Now imagine doing that while your savings stays at $1,000. Look, that was my exact situation. Imagine me doing that and then boom, the pandemic hits. So now I done worked all this overtime at work, made extra money, and I spent it all on my debt. While my actual money that I need to have access to was stuck at $1,000. So now I'm still in debt because I was only able to shave off $12,000 of that $32,000. So there's still $20,000 left that I still owe, and my job decided to shut down for three months and lay everybody off. Moral of the story, you done spent all this time and all this money on paying off your debt without having any priority to your savings. Now your bank account has little to nothing to show for it. But I didn't always think about it like that. At first, I just kind of thought I knew. I thought I knew that the conventional advice to save $1,000 then put that on hold while aggressively paying off your debt. I just thought that that was a one-size-fits-all financial advice that I just thought was right. By the way, that's actually a true story. That was the amount of money I was able to take off of my student loans by paying them off aggressively. And the place I worked at really did shut down for months and laid everybody off when the pandemic hit. The only difference was I was long gone by then working somewhere else and I switched up my knowledge and understanding about money by purely thinking for myself. 
One day I thought to myself, why can't I just save some money to add on to this $1,000 while I'm also paying off my debt? Why can't I just balance out the two instead of choosing between one or the other? Plus one day I just realized, dude, you're not going to win a medal for racing to pay off your debt. Plus right now it's literally not stopping you from doing anything. So what's the rush? Now, since I've already touched on it, I'm going to bring this even more to light because this is something I'm extremely passionate about. It's one of the most popular topics on this channel, and it's also something I feel like a lot of people still don't have that much knowledge on. Saving money. If I had to take a wild guess, I'd say that you were probably raised to save money for a rainy day, right? I was too, and that's actually right. You absolutely should. It's not like emergencies just decide not to happen, and it's not like emergencies decide to happen at convenient times either, so it's definitely important. We call that method stay ready so you don't gotta get ready. But what can make saving problematic is when we don't know when to stop. And I don't mean stop putting money into your savings account. I mean stop to think about other things, other places you can put your money. One day you're gonna to come to the point where you have so much money in your savings account that you really don't have to worry about much because you know that whatever happens, you pretty much have the funds to cover it. I think it's extremely important to have that money at your disposal just off to the side in case of emergency. But have you ever stopped to think how much money you actually wanna have in there? For some, it might be $20,000. For others, it might be six months to a year's worth of expenses. Cool, what do you do once you hit that number? That's actually a conversation I had to have with myself because something I've always wanted to do was build wealth and you simply can't build wealth in a savings account. An example of wealth is when your money makes so much money that you can't outspend it no matter what you do directly or indirectly. Let me tell you something I wish somebody told me earlier. Your bank account is not making money for you. That little 0.05% that bank is paying you ain't doing nothing. Now that's okay if you want that money for easy access in case of emergency. But now it's time to think about outside of the emergency. It's time to think about your future, your family's future. I'm talking about saving to invest your money into something that grows your money to the point it outlives you and your family so that it lasts for generations. That simply isn't possible in a savings account. Plus I had to think of it this way. If I invest my money into assets that make me more money, that means ownership. I could keep every cent I earn in my bank account, but at the end of the day, I don't own the bank. You get what I'm saying? A mindset shift had to take place for me to think this way. Now, I don't think there's anything wrong at all with being frugal, minimal, or even thrifty. Like, I promote being frugal on this channel. But the same way I went hard on saving money, I also had to redirect some of that towards investing. And I found that when I focused on saving and investing at the same time, my money grew a lot more. I used to think people who used to pull up in a Mercedes or a Range Rover were rich. The first thing that would pop into my head is, oh, they got money. That's not always the case, man. And that's what I've come to realize. See, all the things I thought I knew about money were broken into pieces the moment I met a millionaire for the first time. I realized that people who have money don't need to be flashy. And they work smarter by letting their assets make money for them. And then they let their assets pay for their liabilities like cars, clothes, jewelry, you name it. That's the difference between looking wealthy and being wealthy. But how do you build wealth? Well, for one, I have a video on that. And two, you definitely don't build wealth by doing what I was taught earlier in life. Not by getting a good job, working 40 hours every week for 40 years. That's just part of the equation. It's much smarter to do that while you're also building other streams of income while you're younger. And when those income streams grow, you use the profit and reinvest in them to make them grow even more. And once you gain profit in excess, that profit goes into other assets like stocks and bonds. And you're kind of already doing this at work. Like at work, your money should already be going into a 401k or something equivalent to that. And if not, hit up your HR team and make it happen. Look, don't you become a statistic having to work beyond your retirement age just because you didn't know you were supposed to invest in your 401k? Don't you do it. Anyway, that's the formula. You'll see it in books. You'll find me doing those things on this channel because I don't share anything that I don't do. And I've had the blessing of being told about this several times over by mentors I've had and millionaires that I've come into contact with. It's what has grown and expanded my mindset about money and it's exactly how I figured out that everything I thought I knew about money was wrong. And if that's true for me, I know it's true for others out there because chances are if you don't know something, there's also millions of others who don't know either. Hopefully this video was helpful. Anyways, that's the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant, and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so you can control you, control your finances, and control your life. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video. Stay cold.